things in store for his church. Amen. Amen. And, Thank uh, you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you. We're Jesus. right on the edge. We believe it's uh, going to happen. Uh, I've received, uh, you know, varied times calls from people inquiring about the church. And uh, just thank the Lord that uh, he is working. He gives me confidence that he is working in people's thank lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And uh, my prayer is, is that people with hunger yes. and thirst, people that he has chosen would come. Jesus. Praise yes, God. And, uh, so we're going to go before the thank Lord in prayer uh, tonight. Uh, I'd like to lift up uh, Brother Romes Gill. He has, has a church in Lahore, Pakistan. And uh, his wife is pretty sick. His children, his, one of his children are, are pretty sick. Uh, COVID-19, uh, he told me that they're putting their whole place on lockdown again. And uh, it's just uh, COVID-19 where he's at is increasing. It's infected his whole family. Oh, and uh, so he uh, periodically throughout the day, he'll, he'll text or send a message, you know, uh, pray for us, pray for us. So. Uh, let's stand. We're going to lift him up before the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. And uh, we're not going to ask Jesus to touch him. Jesus. We're going to command the sickness to leave oh, hallelujah, his home. Jesus give, gave us authority Thank and power. And uh, I believe we have that authority and that power. So uh, I pray that your faith, Jesus said, if you have faith as of a grain of mustard seed, what would happen if you spoke to the mountain? Be removed and cast into the sea. So, Father in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we lift up Brother Romus and his family, his wife Anna, his children, father, his three sons. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I take authority over this sickness that is in their home. I lose the healing power. Lord Jesus, because you have declared that when we speak those things that you have bound in heaven, they would be bound in the earth. And we would loose those things that you have loosed in heaven, they would be loosed in the earth. And by faith, Lord Jesus, we agree together and touch your throne of grace and pray that your Holy Spirit would be loosed over his home, over his body. We pray over his church, his congregation. We bind this pandemic, we bind this disease, my God, from infiltrating him. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would show yourself strong on his behalf. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by your stripes, Father, by your stripes, we lose the promises of God, which are yea and which are amen. And we thank you, Lord, for it. We ask you, God, to be glorified and sanctified in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Also, I'd like to pray for an uh, individual that called, uh, called this week. Uh, let's lift up David before the throne of grace. God knows his need. And Father, in Jesus' name, we cover David, Father, with our prayers tonight. Asking, Lord of heaven, that your spirit would overshadow him. Asking, Lord of heaven, you would show yourself strong on his behalf. As you would lead, as you would instruct, as you would guide. I bind the influences of hell and the spiritual darkness that surrounds him. I take authority and dominion, Lord Jesus, and I command the darkness to lose his mind so that the light of your gospel would shine, my Father, and you would deliver him, Lord Jesus, and he could find forgiveness of sins and inheritance in them that are sanctified by faith in you, Father. We turn him tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we speak over our city. We speak over our families, Lord Jesus, our loved ones that are not saved tonight. We pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I lose the spirit of the fear of the Lord to overshadow them, to stir them, to smite their heart. That they would open their eyes, my God, and see their need for you in their lives. We bind the powers of darkness and the strongholds of hell that hold captives, uh, captivity captive. We're asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I loose your angels into this city. I loose your angels into every home that is represented by this congregation. And I believe, my God, it is your day. It is your hour. It is your time. It is your season, Father. And I loose the boldness of the Holy Ghost into your people tonight. That your spirit would rise up. And you'd grant unto your servants that with all boldness we would speak your word. By stretching forth your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders would be done. By the name of thy holy child, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Amen, Lord Jesus. Ha ha, yes. Thank you, my God. Your praise, your glory, your honor today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Great to feel His presence. Amen. Amen. We serve a great God today. Yes, we do. Amen. I said we serve a great God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, I believe it. He is upon the throne. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, thank you, my God, yes. Thank you, Lord. In age to age, he stands. Oh, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, will you sing with me? How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Yes, Jesus, yes. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, yes, Jesus, yes. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. Oh, He's worthy, yes. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. Oh, Jesus, yes, you are. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. If I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men unto me. Oh, Jesus, in your name, Father. 
How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Our God, yes, name above all names. Oh, you are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Y'all will see how great, how great is our God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bravo, Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord Jesus. To your name and to your glory, Father. Thank the Lord God. Amen, amen, amen. The angels bow before him. The heaven and the earth adore him. Praise God. Amen. And one day, one day we're going to be around that throne. Praise God. Multitudes. Oh, hallelujah. Multitudes. Hallelujah. Like the voice of many waters. Just picture it in your mind. Singing hail, hail, hail. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, help us to keep our eyes on the prize, Father. Forget those things which are behind. To run with patience, Lord Jesus, that race. To press towards that mark, my God. You're calling in our lives. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, right now I lift up Mike and Pat Krupka before your throne. We pray, Lord Jesus, that the Holy Ghost would overshadow them. I loose your spirit of peace, mercy, and grace. I loose the strength, O Lord, of the Holy Ghost to undergird them. I loose the soundness of mind. I bind the spirit of fear, believing, Lord, that they are in your shelter and they are under the shadow of your wings. I pray in Jesus' name that you would be glorified in their lives tonight. I pray, Lord Jesus, as we receive our offering this evening, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your provision in our lives. As the psalmist said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us provision. We pray you'd continue, Lord, to add to the church daily such as should be saved, that you'd thrust laborers into apostolic temple and give us, Lord Jesus, the kingdom resources that you require, Father, to build this house. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 Praise amen. God if you have an offering. Uh, tonight, we uh, I forgot I spaced it out on Sunday. I forgot it was Mission Sunday, so... Uh, do uh, consider hopefully you give something regularly to support our missionaries and uh, we'll take up that offering uh, uh, either tonight or by Sunday anyway but praise God great to be in the house of the Lord Amen. and uh, I'd like to turn your attention to Psalms 91 Amen. and uh, just the scripture has been uh, on my heart uh, for uh, most of the day and uh, it's 
one of my favorite uh, favorite scriptures. Verse one uh, was one of the uh, first scriptures that I memorized. Uh, you know, the devil knows God's word. Yep. And uh, there's times that the devil will even attempt to use the word of God, just like he did with Jesus in Matthew four. Uh, of course, he always puts a twist on it. But uh, he understands the power of God's word. Can you say amen? amen. And I believe tonight that uh, the deeper we get into uh, these last of the last days, uh, the deeper we, we get into that, uh, we are really going to be, need to be depended on the word of God. And hopefully that you have a consistent schedule of uh, either reading it uh, memorizing it, studying it, hiding it in your heart, uh, because uh, who knows the day may come when they will outlaw Bibles uh, and uh, we'll have to depend on the, the scriptures that we've learned through the years and uh, that the Lord, I believe, uh, that he can quicken his word to us. Uh, but I want to go to uh, uh, Psalms 91 and verse 9, and this is the scripture that uh, this morning uh, right out of the gate uh, was in my spirit and uh, I just believe that uh, God is faithful amen God is faithful amen. and uh, no matter what circumstances you find yourself in no matter what you feel no matter what you see uh, no matter what God is faithful and he has given us his word and his promises. I believe the scripture says that his word is forever settled in heaven and that his promises are yes and his promises are amen. And uh, he says in verse 9 of Psalms 91, because thou has made me, but because thou has made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word tonight. There's times that the scriptures teach us that, uh, if I can say it this way, you know, sometimes as believers we might throw out a verse here and there, and then sometimes we might take it out of the context that it's written in. And sometimes I think we might apply it as a, a, a generality of promise and truth to anybody who attempts to lay claim on the scripture. What I mean by that is I, I think of Romans, what is it, 8.28 that says all things work together for good. And there are times where a person may say, well, you know, they, they may even be claiming it, saying that, well, uh, the, the Bible says that all things work together for good, so I'm just going to believe that God's in this. But it's conditional. It's one of those conditional verses. All things work together for good to those who what? Love God. Who love the Lord. And that doesn't mean just saying it with your lips. Oh, I love Jesus. I mean, anybody can say that. Uh, it means that the love for God means that there is an established relationship with God. I mean, he is your God. You spend time with him. You walk through the day with him. There's relationship there. All things work to good, together for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are the called according to, to his purpose. If you're not work, walking in the purpose of God, then uh, can you lay claim to that promise, to that promised word? You say, well, how do I know if I'm in the purpose of God? If you have a relationship with the Lord, you'll know you're, you're in the purpose of God. Praise the Lord. But this verse 9 is conditional on everything that, that because connects everything that the psalmist said beginning at, at verse 1. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I don't know if you have a secret place. And that doesn't mean necessarily a place where you pray or a place where, uh, you know, you go to be alone per se with the Lord or, or a place where you might sit and, and read your Bible. But there is a, a, a the key word in that uh, first verse is dwelleth. 
there's a, a, a habitation, there's a, a place where you find yourself more often than not sitting at the feet of Jesus. And we all have that, that place where we go, where, where maybe we can uh, be ourselves, let our hair down. Be, we want to weep, we weep. We want to laugh, we laugh. Well, whatever and however you approach God, how you sit with Him. And, uh, but the, the secret place, the dwelling place, uh, I can be in broad daylight uh, being busy about my Father's business and still be in the secret place. Still be dwelling in that secret place. Praise God. Amen. And uh, there's nothing like being under his shadow, being hidden by him, praise God. He said to Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wish I could have uh, taken you under my wing like a mother hen takes her chicks and protects her, her chicks with her wing. They get under there, they, they're hidden in there. And the relationship that you and I can have, as uh, my margin here in my Bible says, the happy state of the godly, oh, my friend. Thank God that we have a place. Thank God we have a secret place that we can go to. And there can be all kinds of noise happening around you. And there can be all kinds of things flying on the left and flying on the right. And you, you're wondering, man, am I going to survive this day? But when you're in the secret place, when you're dwelling with Him and He's with you, praise God. His power is inside. His presence, His Spirit, His Word is the anchor of your soul then the Bible tells us that something will begin to rise up. As he says in verse 2, I will say of the Lord. Yeah. And uh, I believe, uh, let me tell you what happened on Tuesday. On Tuesday we were here, here and we were, were here for prayer. And uh, I had said to the Lord on Tuesday, I, I said, I said, I just don't want to come here just for prayer. How many know what I mean by that? Just yeah. you ever you ever feel that way? Is it well it's a prayer meeting and, and everybody kind of gets in their own corner and kind of does their own thing and and uh, and we fill time and space uh, talking to the Lord in however way we do it. And I, and I said, knowing human nature, Father, you know, things become habitual to us. We do the same thing over and over and over again. That's just how we are. We're creatures of habit. And I said, I said, oh Lord, if you would visit us the Tuesday night while we're uh, while we come and while we're in prayer, and uh, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that that you would visit us and you would meet with us. And so, um, I, you know, I just told him that I said that would be that would be good to to have him here. And so, what ends up happening is, is as we're praying and. And I, I, I'm feeling, and I want to tell the people that had gathered here, I was sitting over there, and I, and, and I was saying, you know, should I, should I say something, Lord? And I, it just was stirring in me and churning in me. And I, and, and, I, and I said, all right. I said, I just got up. I said, this is your business, Lord. And I just said to the folks that were here, I, I, I said, let's, let's just speak into the atmosphere and, and say, Lord, I release your presence. Thank you. And, uh, and I said, just take a few moments and say, Lord, I release your presence. Because as he says in verse 2 of Psalms 91, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. There's power in the spoken word. James said it in his epistle. You know, with the tongue we can say, well, God bless you. And with the tongue we can curse somebody. You know, he uses the, the uh, example of a water fountain. He says, when you go to get a drink out of that water fountain, does salt water and fresh water come out of it? He said, no. And, and the tongue is the most unruly, he says, member of our body. It's the last thing that, uh, you know, the, to, to really yield. That's why when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, according to the Scripture, you will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance because it's a sign that your tongue has surrendered to the Lord and you have given yourself to Him and He now can speak through you. So there is power in speaking the positive Word of God. Paul said it in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Uh, uh, he said, talks about uh, casting down imaginations. And I don't know if you memorize some of these scriptures that, you know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, a lot of times the way he does it is in our mind. And, and uh, that was another one of the first scriptures. Uh, if you want to turn with me there, it's actually chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and, uh, and verse 4. The Apostle Paul, speaking to the Corinthian church, he tells us that the weapons of our warfare, this, this fight for our eternal soul, it's not religion, it's not programs, it's not church protocol. It, we're fighting for our soul. 
We just don't come here so that we can feel good about ourselves and feel a tickle of His presence and then we go about and do our own thing and then maybe, just maybe, we'll make it back the next time to see what, uh, what He can do for us. No, it's warfare from the time you open your eyes in the morning to the time you close them at night. You know, every decision we make, all the choices we make, uh, according to the Bible, it's being recorded in the heavens. And Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, he says, For the weapons of our warfare are what? They're not carnal. They're not fleshly. You're not going to intellectually fight this. You're not going to th try to think positive. The, uh, the, the What was that guy's name? The power of positive thinking. No, Vincent right. You know, you're, you're not going to think your way into heaven. You're not going to think your way in, into victory. And I thank God for... For, uh, you know, for counseling, I thank God for, for the different avenues that he's created for us to have. But there's something about the spoken word of God. There's something, because God used his word. You read Genesis 1. Genesis 1, God said, and boom, the sun was there. God said, and the moon was there. And, 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 and rain, and, and the animals. And eventually he breathed into mankind the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God created by speech, by speaking. And so you and I, when we speak into the atmosphere, one of the, one of the best things you can do when the adversary is on your tail and he's coming after you is to take out the sword of the Spirit, Ephesians 6, which the Bible says is the Word of God, and speak against it and keep speaking against it until he flees. Because the Scripture tells us, resist the devil and what? He'll flee. And sometimes, friend, he just likes to poke and jab and, and, and uh, trust me, he'll see if you really believe what you say you believe. Yes, sir. Paul says it this way in verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to what? The pulling down. The pulling down. King James says the pulling down of strongholds. The word strongholds, it means fortresses, but more importantly, the imaginations that are mentioned in verse 5, casting down imaginations, that's talking about human reasoning. I don't know about you, but I've gotten myself in trouble when I've used human reasoning on occasion. Can anyone say amen? amen. Sure. We think we've got it, the answer. We think we've got it figured out. And we kind of go ahead and do our thing. And lo and behold, we stick our foot in our mouth and we start, we create a, a situation that uh, we're sorry for later on. But you have to connect four and five, realizing, okay, I'm not going to win this in my flesh. I'm not going to win this in any kind of physical ability I might have. I'm not going to win this with intellectual prowess. Uh, but, but if I can cast down, if I can just get these thoughts out of my human reasoning, just as he says here, casting down human reasoning and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge, of God. the knowledge of God. How do you find out what the knowledge of God is? Through the Word. The Word is what gives us the knowledge. Through the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every what? Every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's impossible to do without it. You say, well, I don't know. You know, And there are religious institutions that don't teach that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for today. But let me turn your attention to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, Paul is talking about the differences between flesh and spirit. Of course, it's in this chapter where you find out about the, the fruit of the spirit and the, the works of the flesh. And... Uh, he, he says, verse 13, Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 13. He says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Do you know that the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty is freedom. Wherever God's Spirit is, there's, the atmosphere is supposed to change. That's why I'm so thankful for the services we have. And, and when He visits us, like Sunday, it will, the place was smoking with his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore and so 
We've been called into liberty. Jesus said when the Spirit of truth comes, He will lead you and guide you into all truth. And it's truth that sets us free. Praise God. And so He says in verse 13, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to what? To the flesh. But by love serve one another. You know the proverbial, Well, God knows my heart. He knows I'm sincere. He knows, I, he knows I mean well. Well, if you use that, you're going against Scripture because the Scripture says the heart is deceitful and wicked. Who can know it? God does know it. But the Bible says my heart, my fleshly heart, my human reasoning, my thinking is wicked. It is sinful. And he goes on to lay that out. He says in verse 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There, there was backbiting there. There was bickering. You're always going to find somebody that you're not going to make happy. Come on, let's just face it. If you happen to be the type of person that wants everybody to love you and everybody to like you and everybody to say, oh, you're the best thing since sliced bread, it ain't going to happen, friend. Trust me. In almost 69 years, it hasn't happened to me yet. If you bite and devour one another, verse 15, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. That's what's happening in our world today. My word, the things that are unfolding. Reading something tonight that uh, schools in New York are encouraging their, their children not to use the words mom and dad anymore because it's not, it, 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 it's offensive. It, it's, like, it's like this world get any crazier. All I can say is, come Lord Jesus. Amen. But that's what human reasoning does. When you stray away from God, when you walk away from God, when you stray away from God, when you vote God out of your schools and out of your government and out of every aspect and, and cultural situation you're in, there's only one way to go and that's down. Genesis chapter 6 said God destroyed the earth because the imagination of men's heart was only evil continually and there was violence in the, in the earth. And so he destroyed the earth by a flood back in that day. Peter says he's going to do it this time by fire. That the elements themselves will melt as fervent heat. But Jesus gave us the clue in Matthew 24. And he said just like it was in the days of Noah, so it's going to be. In the days when the Son of Man returns. And we're heading there, friend. We're heading there. Back on point. Verse 16. This I say then. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust, the, the lust of the flesh. And here's the reason why you and I will never find victory. We'll never have total peace. We'll never be able to function as children of God when we're walking in the flesh. Because verse 17 says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are what? Contrary. Contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. For many, many years, I tried getting victory on my own strength and my own intellect. And uh, I don't know how many times I, I, I used to go to church. You know, back then the church doors were unlocked. You can go, could go in there and just be, be in the quietness and. I'd go in there and weep and cry and help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, and, and, uh, and just make all kinds of promises. And then, you know, in a couple of days later, guess what? I was right back in my black hole. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, just like, oh, mercy me, you know, and I just didn't have the power. I didn't have the strength. But then one day, Jesus drew me to himself and filled me with his spirit and Paul says the flesh lusteth against the spirit. It's capital S. It's talking about the spirit of God. Your flesh doesn't want to live for God, serve God, however you want to call it, whatever you want to classify it is. The flesh and the spirit are against one another. And back in the day, my dad was a lifer in the Navy, and he would, he would uh, bring home sometimes, he was, a, he was an aircraft mechanic, and he'd bring home these big magnets that were shaped like a horseshoe. And we'd have a couple of them, and... and they were, we, we used to kind of wrestle with them because we'd try to stick the two opposing poles to see if those magnets would stick together. But they were big. They were huge. So it was, it was, uh, it was no way you could do it. None of us could, could make that connection. That's how the flesh and the spirit is. They're opposite poles. 
You cannot do the things that you would. And he tells us that. You cannot do the things that you would. But, verse 18, see, there's an option. But, if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. And then he lists the works of the flesh. But back in Psalms 91, back in Psalms 91, in verse 3, the psalmist says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Praise God. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And verse 9 starts with what word? Because. because. As the psalmist penned these words, his trust in God, his trust in God being his fortress, his trust in God being his refuge, his trust in God's protection, the, the snare of the fowler, that, that trap that the adversary in life sometimes has you trapped in. And, and you know, of course, uh, uh, it's actually in that context, it's talking about the, the uh, bird trapper or the bird snarer. And they would put that snare and the bird would walk right into it and it would wrap its legs and, you know, just catch it. And so he's talking about those, those, those things, those those snares of life, and sometimes it's by the devil, sometimes it's by our own doing. You know, we view something we shouldn't view. We, we go a place we shouldn't go a place. And many times the scripture points out uh, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. When I have that relationship with Jesus, and, uh, and uh, he orders my steps. He, I'm sensitive enough in relationship in, in the Holy Ghost that if I go to do something, that his word says, touch not the unclean thing. And David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. So, you know, I, I can be walking through life and, and uh, I don't know about you, but I know when my flesh is, is, is stronger than my spirit. Can you say amen? amen? You know, there's times where the flesh just seems to be overpowering. It's, oh God, you know, help me, help me, help me. But David's confidence in, in, in this, this God that he served, and he had found that secret place, verse 1. He, he was hiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And he was able to lay claim to these promises of protection and covering and provision and strength, praise the Lord, and preservation. And the condition of the verse 9 is all because he made the Lord, which is my refuge. Uh, the Hebrew word means hope. It's a place of refuge, a place of, uh, of shelter, but more importantly, a place of trust. Trust is seems it's so hard to find these days. There's almost not an in there's almost not an industry, Dave, that you can go to where, where you can truly walk away from there saying, I trust what that guy told me. Or I, I trust, you know, you take your car to the mechanic, or you take your car to the store, or wherever. Or, or, or you know, you know, you, you, there's such an apprehension there. Well, I wonder if this person's just trying to try, you know, and I'll kind of try to try to really concentrate what I'm being told and and, uh, you know, I'll go to one mechanic and I'll say, oh, you need this done and this done and this done and this done. And I'll say, well, could you write that down? Give me a price on it. And then I'll take the price and go down the road to my mechanic and say, hey, this is what they said. Can you want to check it out for me? And, no, you don't need this. You don't need this. Not yet anyway. It's getting there, but you can, you'll survive it a little bit. Because you just can't trust any. And, friend, it has even moved into the medical field. At least at one time, you kind of could trust what a doctor said, or I mean, just look at all this COVID business and the pandemic stuff. And well, we got to do this, then we got to do that. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Well, 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 we're going to do this, and then we're going to try that. Gonna, and you know, people are walking around, and they've got people so fearful and all worked up in a frenzy. You don't know whether you're coming or going. Oh, mother yesterday took the second dose and she died two days later. Okay, are we in an experience? Are we all guinea pigs? So you don't know what to believe. But boy, every time that commercial comes and it starts out and the guy says, Oh, have you heard the news? The vaccines are boom. I shut that thing off. I say, I don't want to hear that lie. You do what you want to do. I'm not saying that, don't, you know, I've 
resisted the flu shot for many years. This year I happen to take it. But there's so much stuff going on out there that you don't know what truth is. But there is one who knows everything. Yes. He knows our thoughts before we think them. He, the Bible says even before I even open my mouth, he knows what I'm going to say. Yes, sir. Scripture says if I acknowledge him in all of my ways, that's not just blanketly making a statement, oh, God, I'm going to do this, and, and, and you know, uh, uh, Lord, is it okay if I do this? Well, he didn't answer me, so I guess it's all right. When we acknowledge him, when we trust him in everything that we do, we trust him for our provision. We trust him. I mean, you trust him to keep your soul, don't you? Money. You trust him to get you to heaven. How, how much do you trust him to get you to heaven? Are you willing to say, Lord, whatever you have to do in my life to ensure that I get there, you do it. Yes. That's what I say to him. Sister Sue, I've said to him, you know how he's given us a free will and he'll never ever violate your free will or your choices. He'll never grab you by the arm. Come on, I told you to do this. I told you to Never. It ain't going to happen, friend. He's given us a free will. We make choices. We're the ones that make the decisions. We walk through the doors we're not supposed to walk through. We go places we're not supposed to do. We do all kinds of things. And God is not going to intervene because he's restricted himself from violating our free will. But I've said to him, Lord, I don't want a free will. I give you permission to violate my free will. And when you have that kind of trust and that kind of relationship with him, the Bible says that all these blessings, verses 1 through 8, were conditional because the psalmist had made God his habitation, his abode. It goes as, as deep as talking about the tabernacle. And if you know anything about the tabernacle in the Old Testament, when that high priest would would kill that animal in the outer court and he would take that bowl of blood and go into the to the holy place and and he'd do his thing at the table of showbread and he would do his thing at the golden candlesticks and then and he would do his thing at the altar of incense and then walk through that veil into the shekinah into the holy of holiest of holies where the Ark of the Covenant was, was in Old Testament times, represented the presence of God. And he sprinkled that blood on that Ark of the Covenant. I don't know if he'd pause a bit, if he'd wait. I don't know if there was a second, a, a minute. I have no idea. But he would go ahead and he'd do what he was supposed to do. And the scripture says if he did what he was supposed to do and he was right, then God accepted the, the sacrifice. And Israel's sins were pushed up for another year on credit. He wouldn't judge him for it. And that word habitation means you're in the abode with God. It's not just coming to church. It's not just reading your Bible. It's not just, just saying I'm a believer and I've been born again. And You abide with him habitually. Matter of fact, you look up the word in the dictionary. Habit, habitation, the state or process of living in a particular place. And that's why we're different. That's why we're different is because we abide with Jesus. You only, you only, you mean to tell me you're, you only talk to Jesus and fellowship with Jesus when we're in this place? Just on Thursdays and Sunday afternoons? I hope not. I wake up in the morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Thank you. I walk through the day with my mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. You ever you ever lay down to take a nap or something, or are you just sitting, maybe dozing off in a chair, and the, the words in your mind, and you're thinking about words. That's that's what this habitation word was doing throughout my day. Just on my mind, on my mind, because you've made me your habitation. Because you've made me your habitation. Praise God. In the Amplified translation, Psalms ninety one nine says this: Because you have made the Lord your refuge. And the Most High, your dwelling place. Stand with me if you would tonight. In Psalms 71 and 3, the psalmist takes it up a notch. Psalms 71 and 3. 
He says, Be thou my strong habitation. They say the deeper we get into these end times. I mean, there's things happening now. I mean, I really thought by the time I'd hit 40, Sister Cynthia, I'd be in heaven. I really do. <laughs> I got baptized in 1982. I got the Holy Ghost. You know, matter of fact, this weekend, 39 years. Sister Sue, I thought, sure, by the time I hit 40, I'm going to be in heaven. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> but things that were going on back then that we called evil, and we kind of had, ooh, what we're facing now is multiplied a thousand times, a thousandfold. And I never dreamed we'd be seeing some of the things that we're seeing unfold. Right. But I thank God. You know, that's why Paul said, Paul, my understanding of Philippians chapter 3, when Paul wrote, wrote the words that, that he hadn't, uh, that he hadn't apprehended yet, he said that I might know him. My understanding, uh, according to, I was sitting in a teaching many years ago with Brother Dinwiddie, and, and he mentioned that Paul had been uh, walking with the Lord for 30 years, and here he is, 30 years later, saying, I don't even know him yet. How many, you find that to be true? You know, the Bible says in Romans uh, chapter 11, verse 33-ish, where it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. You'll never exhaust Him. You'll never understand Him fully. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our, th our thoughts. And to, and to make Him some, you know, to come and talk to Him out of some book, or, or out of some uh, religious system uh, taking this God uh, off of His throne of glory and, and putting into your box and uh, expecting Him to think the way you do and act the way you do and talk the way you do. No, a thousand times no. He's so much higher. He's so much bigger. That's, all, that's why we can always try to achieve. Always reach. Praise God. Uh, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. And God is drawing people today people that are sick and tired of being sick and tired people that are hungry people that are looking for living water people that are looking to eat of the bread of life something that's going to satisfy their soul not just give them an instant high not just give them an instant quick fix type of thing but something that's going to bring transformational change to their lives that's what that's what this world needs, and that's what people... God is talking to people. God is drawing people. God is showing people. And according in the, in the elbows that I rub, shoulders that I rub, we are on the precipice. We are on the threshold of God doing some tremendous, tremendous things. We're not even going to be able to have answers for the things that God's going to do. We're going to be in awe by what God is about to do. And it starts with making him your habitation. Be thou my strong habitation. I just don't want to be in your presence, Lord. I want to be in your presence. I want to be sitting at your feet like, like Mary was sitting at your feet and learning of you and talking with you. And allowing you to write your law on my inward parts and setting a watch over my tongue and creating in me a clean heart and renewing in me a right spirit. In another place, he says, as the, as the heart panteth, as the, as the deer that was being hunted and he's running through the, through, through the woods and, and, and panting, he's... <laughs> And he says, as that deer is panting after the water brooks, he, he was exhausted. His lungs were getting ready to explode. And, and he was just, well, just wanting something to drink. He, looking for a way of escape. Uh, maybe hitting through a stream so the dogs would lose scent and not follow in him. But he said, that's how he felt. His inner man, his inner being felt as the heart panteth after the water brook. So does my soul. Pant after you, O oh God, after the living God. In another place, it says, God, you are my God, and early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. 
to see your power and to see your glory as I have seen you in the sanctuary. And because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Shall praise you. you talk about a strong habitation where the word of God is hidden in your heart and your desire is to be with him and please him and walk with him. Praise God. Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Aren't you glad for that promise, church? Why don't we thank him tonight in Jesus' name? Father, we thank you, Lord. In your mighty name, Jesus, we appreciate you, Lord. We thank you, my God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love, Jesus. I loose your spirit, Father, of grace and mercy and peace in this house. I loose the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus, in your presence. Let the Comforter come and walk amongst us, my God. Let the glory and dew of heaven rest upon us as we leave this place and go to and fro to be busy about our business. In your mighty name, Jesus, let your word find a place to produce fruitful soil, seed, O oh God, that you could breathe upon as you shape us and mold us, Father. Bring us along precept upon on precept and line upon line here a little bit and there a little bit father we pray that should be the anchor of our soul my god the sure anchor of our soul and by your grace help us to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and help us god to run with patience that race that is set before us looking unto you jesus looking unto you the author and the finisher of our faith we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. God bless you in the name of the Lord. We'll see you on Sunday at 1.30. Have a great week. And uh, continue to pray for Brother Mike and Sister Pat. That God would touch their bodies. And uh, those that are not here. Anyone else, else that you know uh, that are needing prayer. God bless you in the name of the Lord.